Disaster Relief already has some teams in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, I'll be going to join them tomorrow. I'll be gone for about a week, but uh, keep those people in Florida in your prayers. Uh, many of them lost everything that they have, and uh, there were, I think, 68 confirmed deaths from the storms themselves. So that's a lot of a lot of loss that they're going through, and we just hope we can go down and, and help them start getting everything back, turning everything around, getting their lives back as good as it can be. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful day that you've given, and we just pray that you would continue to bless our community. We pray for the people of Florida and the, and the uh, western side especially, and even up in North Carolina that was flooded. And Lord, we've been there. We've seen what destruction it can do in just a matter of a few minutes and a few hours. So, Lord, we just pray that you would be with them, especially those that have lost family members and some that have lost their homes and businesses. And, Lord, just let uh, all those that are down there, Lord, not only the group that I go with, but others that are there helping those people get back to some kind of normalcy. Lord, we just pray that you would continue to bless. Bless our nation tonight. Bless uh, our military, our law enforcement, our first responders, those who are out there to help us and make sure that we can rest and go to bed, lay our head on a pillow, and, and expect to have a good night's sleep because someone's there taking care of problems. Uh, Lord, bless this meeting tonight, as you already have, but now we go through, uh, Lord, the rest of this meeting, doing the business of this county, and let us do the very best we can for the most people, and we give you the praise. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> this is a regular scheduled meeting of the Day County Board of Commissioners, which takes place same time on the first Thursday of every month. Proper notice this meeting was given a legal origin. The Day County Sentinel has been posted in the hallway. At this time, I do need a roll call. Mr. Lowry? Here. Courtline? Here. Golf? Here. Ms. Bradford? Here. And Chair President. Mr. Lowry, you want to go ahead and start with your committee report, please? Okay, let me get down here to it. I wouldn't. I thought we had citizens' participation first. Well, that's right. I didn't skip them. Well, that's right. Anybody want to come up and talk to us tonight? I was fixing to put that in number four. We we do have. Come on, Walter. Come up in front of me. I don't mind. <laughs> Tell us who you are, Walter. I'm Walter Moore. Walter Moore from Lookout Mountain. <laughs> That's me. I want to complain about our taxes some more again and know about these Airbnb taxes that we're <coughs> where the money's going. I just got my tax bill, and I'm going to have to pay our county about $20,000 this year. Mm -hmm. And I've got two Airbnbs, and according to Airbnb, y'all are collecting six to $900 a month off of them. So why can't we have a tax credit or something to help me with my tax bill instead of, I mean, where's the money going that we're collecting for? Don, how's that split up? You, you're the man that can tell them you're the CFO. <laughs> All right. We have a contract in place with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Data Alliance, and it's, it has to go to uh, a 501c6 organization which they qualify for and qualify as in fact they may be the only one in Dade County active at this point and those funds are used primarily for tourism because uh, typically people the only people that pay those taxes are usually visitors no locals ever pay those taxes it's only people that come and stay in Dade County are the ones that actually are paying those that it's an eight percent excise tax and so when we when they pay that it goes into about 30 days later we try to cut them a check for i can't remember the exact amount it's a percentage amount uh the first three pennies basically though do go back in the general fund which do help reduce property taxes well okay are they a government entity they are in con under contract with the county governing body. 
Yes. So we're, we're paying taxi for somebody that's not even a government entity. We are the governing entity and we are doing contract services through them. By law, that's the only thing you can use that money for. It has to be to promotion of uh, 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 tourism. And I'm doing this from memory. I, I mean, there's a, a lot more that Department of Community Affairs can provide us. And you can go to the Department of Community Affairs and see it online. But they provide, I mean, he'll get up here shortly and tell you exactly what all they do monthly. And, uh, but that's what we help, that's what helps fund that whole organization and their employees to promote tourism in Dade County. And like I said, no local citizen pays a penny. Well, um, actually we do because Airbnb would pay us more money if they weren't paying the county the tax money. Now, you, you, they charge that above what you charge. I know, but that's what they're saying. We could go up on our rate of our house if they weren't spending money coming to a county. That's, that's between you and Airbnb or VRBO or whoever. This is above and beyond what the consume, what the owner charges for the rent of the night. If you charge $100, then it's $108. So it's a short-term rent? It is a short-term rental only. Is the lineman paying it? They're not short-term rentals. They're over 30 days. Okay. They're usually well, actually, between 91 the, actually, days. Actually, the law states 100 and something days. And the lineman, certain classes do fall in under the eight weeks that they should have to pay it. No, I don't so think so. Not meeting. according to our ordinance. That's not correct. I'm not the sharpest tax in box, but I did research <clears throat> this before I come open my mouth. That we don't collect on them because they're over the threshold. I think it's 90 well, days. I think we need to check that and go collect some from them too. What do you That's something I've not really thought. I mean, I know the I know the lineman, the rental that they that they have the uh, the boys are actually. Uh, they become Georgia citizens, you know. I mean, they change their driver's license over. You know, they have to before they before they leave. And then when they leave here, well, that's they, actually you know, a loophole that, for them to get their CDL. Yeah, I mean, so that's, it's that's, not, that's they're that's not all, doing it. That's all it's for. Be residents. It's just a loophole that's to help it. them get CDL. But they couldn't get them. They could not. You know, without right. that. Yeah. Yeah. So their their eight week classes actually fall in under Georgia law that they need to be paying the Airbnb tax in or whatever the short term rental tax. Mm -hmm. That's something we'll look at. I just have really never thought about. You know, really. I, I have looked at that, um, and it doesn't. It did not. They're they're usually at a um, nine week nine week or over ninety days, and it did. They did not fall in right. with the class frame of their residents. Did not fall in the frame of a short term rental. They're usually here ninety one to one hundred and twelve days. Yeah. We still need to look at because that'd be a chunk of money right there. Yeah. Well, then they have multiple, all they do multiple of them the, in, the, they in go up one on house. They go upon the uh, rental rights, you know, be a goal. Hmm. Well, why can't, I mean, can't the commission do something to let us have a tax credit or something to whatever our Airbnb is after our property taxes get paid, then y'all keep the rest of the money and give it to whoever you want to. No. But I mean, that, that money right there is, it's, it's, you know, when it's paid, it's, it's earmarked. It goes. It, we can't put it back to like loss. That's what loss is. It you might have heard us talking about that. Well, it it goes directly into keeping your taxes down, the millage rate, and keep well, my it down. taxes don't seem to be down too much. No, but you, I know mine either. But the appraisal, my appraisal went up three times in the last two years. They went up over half, over almost a half a million dollars in two years. Yeah. Well, and I was paying eleven hundred something dollars a month, I think, and now then they went up again. And well, I got a twenty thousand something dollar bill. Yeah. Two or three days ago. Yeah, if you add them all together. Right, if you add them all That's together. Right. I, know. I mean, I got a view tax, I've got a Airbnb tax, or whatever. I mean, so. How many of those you got? The, the, I got three the, houses the on three the on the hill. Yeah, and yeah. then I bought one over here in, in the valley. But, mm. yeah. And I don't even know if that includes farm or not. But. Well, probably it probably does, I'd say, you know, if you got them all. So you say y'all can't even figure some kind of. No, I mean, whenever they started yeah. collecting the tax on the Airbnbs for short-term rentals, who passed that in legislation? Was that local legislation no, no, or was that was state? State. State. state? State. It was state. Passed two years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah. two years ago. 
And I and I mean, and that's one reason. I mean, I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but the linemen just barely fell out. But if you look in their eight week class, they should have to be painted, not the ones that stay the, on everybody that come for the eight week course should have to be painted. Mm. We'll look into it, Walter. I appreciate. I mean, it. Really, I mean, because that is that's, you know, it's like I said, that's a lot of money. It could be, you know, but of course it's still going to have to go. What I wish we could do is collect it, and like you're talking about. I've looked at a lot of stuff that we could try to go back and lower, you know, our our homeowners, our property tax people pay property tax, and, well, and, 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 it's, and you, know, you can go, you can look at a lot of stuff, and then you go back, and then you got you legislators and all you got different things that kick it right back and say you can't do that i wish we could go in and pass a one percent tax in bay county put it right back nothing for nothing but nothing but to use here right here and not share it with the tax and with the <clears throat> state now or maybe even a two percent and that way you could really drop the, the millage rate i mean you could drop your uh, property tax now. Uh, what do we need to do about checking on people i bought a house over on cag road mm -hmm. all right the taxes on that house was 72 dollars a year Four people lived in that house. All of them drawn a disability check. Wasn't nothing wrong with none of them. Hmm. And they told me the reason the taxi was $72 because they were drawn a disability. I got my tax bill on that house the other day and it's $3,000 something dollars. Yeah. A little over $3,000. Once you bought it. Once, you once I bought it. it. Yep. And they were paying $72. I mean, how many people in this county is riding a disability? Hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of people that's got exemptions in this county you wouldn't believe them. And, and when it changes out of that, well, it's a... When they die or whether the kids take it over or whatever. Well, what have we got to do about finding out who these people are to do something about it so people like me and a lot of these other good people ain't paying all this high dollar. So whenever you had that house and they were on disability and you knew they were, but you knew they could work, did you turn them in? Well, I ain't. That's the start of it. I mean, like. I mean, I mean. But see, it's easy to go and see. Who is getting exemptions is not. I mean, on the computer, you can go look. You'd have to go. That's what I say, though, with many. Could, yeah, but to say for sure that they're disabled, disabled. I mean, look at the people now that's that's drawing it. You know, good and well, or as healthier than you, me or you, and they're drawing money right now. Well, look that's at people it. pulling any disability parking spots. Ain't nothing wrong with them. Mm -hmm. And somebody in a wheelchair is parking halfway across the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, I Russell Boulevard the other day was a motorcycle, big one, had the uh, handicap tag on. I mean, it was a mass, you know, and I, uh -huh. I, I never seen one on, but it was Georgia Tech. Now, I know where you come. I know where you come from. I don't well, know. I just. Well, it's it's good. That, that's what. <laughs> I never thought I'd want to sell out late day, Kenny, but I might have to. You ain't, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> well, I mean, what we do? <clears throat> I yeah. mean, somebody, yeah. somewhere, somebody's got to be accountable for this money, dude. Huh? I mean, I don't mind paying my fair share, Ted. I don't. And I don't either. <coughs> fair share is not too fair. One idea I thought about, because I have rental houses too, Some, one of them went up 28%, and they went up last year, but just in one year, they went up 28%. The I don't know what they went up. I know they went up a lot. No, they were just one house. They on on appraisal. Yeah, on the appraisal. Uh -huh. Some of them went up 22, one of them went up 24. I got to get me a job being an appraiser. But what? Well, what we need to do though is get a certain new state senator. Do what? So that's what we need to do. My idea, and I've, I've sent your son, Colton, Senator. Maybe new. we need to get a tax exemptions for being lifetime residents. Well, they need to limit the growth to five percent. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, I appreciate y'all look into that. And see though. We will. I mean, that's in, you know. I guess I'm going to bring out $25 next week. Thank you. Oh, thank you for coming, Walter. Anybody else want to talk to us now? Jennifer. Okay. Um, I'm Jennifer Blair, and um, I live in Rising Fawn on Lookout Mountain, and I am the project coordinator for the Trenton City Park mural installation. And so I just wanted to come here tonight and say delightedly that it is completed. Um, so if you don't know, um, it's on what is commonly known as the Scout Building in the City Park. Um, 
that building has two uh, brick walls and it has two block walls. So the image on the right is the southern facing, I believe, and the upper left image is the western facing. Those were the before photos. And then that bottom left was um, after it had been washed and uh, primed. And then this is what it looks like now. Um, it was painted by a um, experienced muralist, Joy Taylor. So that's the side that faces the creek. Um, so if you haven't seen, you can see part of it from Main Street. Um, but if you haven't yet, I do encourage people to um, get out of their car and walk around the pedestrian trail and, and see the whole thing. Um, this project was a huge collaboration. Um, foundations, um, organizations, municipalities, local businesses, um, and so, so, so many um, individuals contributed to this project. Um, and I just want to say, I know each and every one of you. I know who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and I also um, have something for you. So um, it'll take me a little time to so be patient, but um, I will get them to you. They are souvenir postcards um, designed by uh, Heidi Wilson. Um, and they have the information on the back side. Um, I have one for each of you tonight as well, um, as I hope that you uh, appreciate um, projects like this and support uh, public art uh, now and in the future. Um, are there any questions or comments? It looks good. I mean, we, I, I've, I've looked at it. It's, it's, it's you know, talent. Uh, whoever did that. Joy talented. Taylor. Mm -hmm. She's done. She's done many. She recently completed another one um, outside of the Creative Discovery Museum. If you're on 27 and you look um, off toward the Creative Discovery Museum, it's a three-dimensional volcano. And at night, they're going to light it up and have um, hmm. you know smoke coming out of hmm. it and create a green space there. But yeah, she's she's super talented, a lifelong lifelong artist. Hmm. Awesome. Good job. We appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Anyone else Thank before you. we move on? I didn't know I had another sign. Here. Okay. Move down to Mandy. Oh, I'm sorry. Lamar. Wait, we're, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. We've been talking. He got out of way. Oh, Lamar. Yeah. No, sit down. Sit down. I sent you away. I thought he was just saying hello. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just read your name out loud. <laughs> Go ahead, Lamar, and just give us a report. We want to hear all the good. Uh, let's see. Now I got to get back to where I was. Okay, uh, 911 activity for the month is we had 612 EMS calls. 675 fire departments. We had 3,083 calls for police, and that includes the coroner and the natural resources, Department of Natural Resources, Public Safety, Day, Sheriff, Trenton, Lookout Mountain, Judicial Drug Task Force, Georgia State Patrol, and Georgia State Probation for a total of 43.70, so we're way up this past month. Uh, you do that. We had uh, 12 E911 addresses. So these are actual new homes coming into the county. For a total in 2022, we've had 105 new E911 addresses, so we're moving on at that. Mm. One thing I'd like to point out is I'd like to thank Jared and our one of our inmates. If you look at our park out there, when I went over to the library the other day, I thought we got all new stuff. I thought we had new benches, new trash cans, and they redid it. They, they have re-stained them, resealed them. They look like them. brand new stuff. And they were needing it so bad, and and they, I noticed they've been they're filling in dirt out here now. But if you see Jared or always those inmates, I always take time to thank them for what they're doing, the improvements that they're making. It's a 
making a beautiful place where we live. So that's all mine. Talk now. We don't have a whole lot going on at the sports complex. We've had rec football and then soccer going on. But for the month of September, we had 20 electrical inspections. There was nine new constructions, four new construction temporary poles, and then one reconnect, a mobile home, and a camper. But that's 30, you know, 20 electrical inspections for the month of September. So I, I go back, and I keep saying this because I keep going back to we've got more than 16,000 people in the county. He's had 105 new 911 addresses in the county, and we've that's that's the lowest number we've had probably in a while is 20 for the month. But that's why I've started reporting on these to keep to show that we are growing in population. That's true. But we have contested the census, just like all the Northwest Georgia counties, most of all of them, and we'll be hearing from that before long, you know, and just see. So we, you know, everybody says, you know, their, their numbers were wrong, most right. of them. <clears throat> Mr. Gow. Well, we're glad to say again that our splash was over 300,000 again for the for the month, 305,973. <clears throat> and with that being said, I know there's not a lot we can begin to do because we've got an election coming up that the early, elect, uh, early voting will start in just a few weeks. And then uh, it'll be here in this room where it always is at least at this particular time. And uh, I was asked by one citizen yesterday at church about the referendum, the local referendum that's on the ballot for t splosh It is there. So you look at these numbers and you find out the splosh, t splosh, t splosh, which is education, uh, about how much money would come into the county for roads, for the things we're talking about tonight, the striping and the paving and, the, and, and all these things that we're doing. So... Uh, that's something that's, that's going to happen to probably one of the most important elections, I think, in Georgia in a long time. So I do hope that people get out and vote. If you want to see a sample ballot, they're here in the room, they're on the door, they're all over the wall, and, and uh, you can get those sample ballots and see who's running for what office and all the questions, constitutional questions, and whatever on there, because that's how, when Mr. Moore come up here and talk, that's how these things come to be. They all start out as a... Either a referendum is all we can do, but the legislature and, and they they have these things coming in from groups, whether it be a chamber of commerce group or logging groups or whatever, they come in and that's how a lot of these laws and all these things get changed. And there's one of the questions on there about equipment uh, that'd be very important to a lot of people you might want to read. Uh, when Paula was in here a few weeks ago about our uh, assessments and all that's coming up she talked about some disparity between the auditors uh, and it wasn't anything terribly bad I guess but uh, just so everybody knows the all state auditors for that, that division did come the other day we met with them in Paula's office and we did find out they're not here to hurt us there it is but we're trying to find and what it is it's it's when the assessors have to use these dates and the auditors use these dates and it just causes a problem in that 40, what it done, 40, they want you to be at 40 and we're at 30, 38 or 38, 39 and 100 and something counties <clears throat> out of out of 159 or that way. So they are actually here to hurt us. Uh, we had some, to tell you my luck, we had a meeting that I had attended uh, in Jekyll Island and got five minutes from the hotel and got turned around and come back because some guy named Ian was about to hit the, the coast so they sent everybody home. So there's some uh, stuff coming up for commissioners on the Zoom meeting for that. Uh, and there are poll workers. We mentioned the election. I don't know how many they still need, but they've had trouble getting poll workers. If you know anybody interested in that, then please have them come by and see the election uh, office here. And, and finally, I will say, if I am correct, and I think I am, the New Salem Festival will be Saturday. Is that in the... Uh, Oh, I stole your thing. He's, he's going. He's told me. So uh, they have some very good. I'm sorry that I'm going to miss it because I'll be gone. But Vanna, show them the uh, the brochure. But uh, it's always a great couple of days out there, a weekend to go spend some time, get some good food and a lot of crafts and just fellowship time with a lot of people you don't get to see that often. That's it. Miss Bradford. Um, I do want to add to that. You know, a lot of people want to know about the polls. Come volunteer, find out what's going on. Um, I think that's a great opportunity for a lot of people to see what is actually going on. 
Um, and my report is uh, we got mowing done on north uh, side and we're starting on the south end. Uh, been working on uh, the potholes throughout the county, um, waiting, which Teddy probably t say more about this, but there's some parts that we're not getting for the p pavers. That's right. They should be here next week. They've been telling us, and it's a, you know, it's just not, it's not a real, uh, this paver, we try to keep late model equipment where they, it does not break down. This is uh, only pertain to the radiator and the paver, and, and they are having issues getting the, the radiator for that pavement, uh, paver, and, and they're, they're promising us next week, because that's, that's stopped all of it. You know? Right. Right. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. It's just, uh, but, but anyway, hopefully we can get back in line with our pavement because we got quite a bit to finish, you know, before winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we're still kind of working on some computer issues. Um, hopefully we'll have that worked out and then we'll be able to get a better report of what's actually going in and out with recycling and tonnage. But we've had um, almost eight trailers a day going out which is a lot mm -hmm. it's Gorge. probably the most that we've seen in several several months yep and yeah. it's not even holidays yet. I mean, yeah. that's one that's one where we peak out is during thanksgiving and christmas well what I, what i asked was um you know what what was causing it and um a lot of building yeah which i thought was interesting yeah so. mm -hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll start off with the, <clears throat> I've had in the last month or so, we've had um, a, a lot of people that's called uh, pertaining to dialysis. We have a lot of people in our area, in our county, and that have to go to, to dialysis there in, uh, on Broad Street. Most of them go to Broad Street, not only here, but in the Bryant area all the way around. And, and uh, they've been working with um, actually Memorial, uh, uh, Andrew called me back today and He's trying to set up some meetings next week again with us uh, to try to to try to try e either bring a group in or hospital that would actually come in and open a dialysis clinic right here in Dade County in the central point, part, preferably in the city. That way people don't have to go to Chattanooga. And our vans, we transport a lot of people, you know, for dialysis. And uh, so I just want everybody to know we're, we're working on that. We're doing the best we can. And, and um, hopefully we'll have some positive results. But that's a... There's a lot to it. There's a lot more to it than actually even finding the building and coming in and locate them because it's. Uh, but I'll, I'll keep you up on it as time goes, and uh, and it's just we're just, just bear with us because I never dreamed it was that many people in this in this whole area here that that actually go to dialysis, and most of them and they, don't they go three times a week? Most of them, some. Well, some. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they go three days a week. They're on shift three four hours. On Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Please, uh, touch the Saturday. Yeah. Uh, really, they're a liability to us because they can bleed out. Uh, they have a lot of health problems, but we, we have kept pushing on taking them. Um, we are doubling, and they're even trying to put more on us. Yeah. And it's cutting into just even our public transportation, but they yeah. need it so bad. Yeah. That's the big thing for Dallas here in, in Trenton because we get them, if we can get a clinic here, we can really transport a lot more than what we do. We're barely touching the surface. You know, I know. It's just amazing. I know. Uh, you know, but but anyway, we, we are working on that, and I, I hope I hope we have some positive results. You know, but uh, another thing here, uh, not pertaining to well, not pertaining to health, but uh, the water authority. You know, of course, was here. If y'all were, were listening or whatever about the bridge up at uh, up at Squirrel Town, which that'll be the first bridge in the county, state bridge that'll be replaced. Uh, and then, then they'll move on from that one, and by that time, 2024, 2025, they'll be able to start uh, with the one on 136 going uh, over to the high school. But and, and and this bridge up here, and we touched on a little bit, but they've uh, they have hit Dade County or the Water Authority up for uh, a substantial amount of money, and we will be working with them. I've already started the calls and the process, you know, this past week, and uh, we'll we'll do our best to try to. You know, to try to save all that money we can and get that cut down. Um, the uh, the public health uh, uh, department there. I'm just going to go from one to the other. But I don't even notice the uh, 
the uh, low flying planes yet or helicopters or whatever, but they are doing that rabies drop again. Um, I had a lady call day before yesterday and she found an odd thing in her yard and anyway, that, it, it turned out it was one of the one of the uh, uh, things that they dropped. So don't be alarmed if you find something or if your dog brings something up there. It, it's just a, it looks like a, almost like a dog biscuit or whatever, but they are doing it because we still have a, a pretty good report of rabies in Georgia and in Northwest Georgia. So uh, that's what that, that's what's going on there. Um, our, our storm shelter at Rising Fund, we're about 99% on it. We've still got to, we got to pave a lot. Uh, we got all the uh, handicapped concrete poured this past week. Uh, Jared and them finished the plumbing yesterday and day before. Uh, it's really, it's, it's going to work out really good, especially for our boating. We'll be able to move that in there. And uh, so uh, that one, and, and then they, they've immediately moved from it to the four fields. They're trying to get it finished. And then, of course, the one at Davis. And uh, so uh, that's kind of a report on those things. It's been kind of slow going, but uh, but they are, it's, it's coming coming to life there. Um, the, uh, let's see what else I got here. Robert touched on this too, but we did have uh, the auditors here uh, uh, from uh, on, on the tax uh, the tax audit that Paula was talking about uh, last week, and it was pretty lengthy, uh, pretty informative, but it was a long a long meeting, and uh, there was three people came up from the state, and uh, it was uh, like Robert said, they were uh, they were they could see our point, and I think they uh, when they left there, they uh, we Paul and them they presented a really good uh, case to them. And I think we'll get some positive results out of that. I, I, I feel I feel that. Because I, I was kind of worried about it because, you know, sometimes you get, you have a meeting like that and it's all a one-sided thing. You know, they do all the talking and, you know, when you leave there, you think, man, you know. And But uh, but I, I feel good. They and, and the reason I think they really, you know, they really listen. We're, we're not the first county they've been to. They, We had most of the counties in northwest Georgia that, uh, that appeal this. Uh, and that's big. I mean, that's something that's unheard of almost. So that shows somewhere there's there's something not something not right. You know, there's something. So uh, and they'd already been actually they'd already done one before they got here, and then they had one after they were going to Bartow, I think, or whatever after they left here. So uh, we we feel pretty good about that. We won't know anything uh, for probably a month or so on that, and uh, we'll be sure to get that on our website. However, that uh, ruling is on that. Um, the uh, Let's see here. We're still having problems, you know, in the county. I was on the phone yesterday three times and today with the EPD, this uh, Jason Rogers. He's in with the enforcement of the, uh, he's over the solid waste, which, which that pertains to anybody that's dumping or burying, uh, bringing uh, debris in and dumping it in our county, like from out of state. And uh, we've still got uh, a couple of issues. One pretty major issue um, at On Sand Mountain, and uh, he uh, he'll be back in here next week with some people, and, and not really telling us a lot about it because now they've got where well, they come in, and so. But you know, if you see this or suspect it, you know, call us. Try to call us. I mean, these people went directly to the state, but if you call us, we can come out and talk to you, talk to the people that's doing it, and it may be somebody that don't even really realize we're supposed to be doing, not supposed to be doing it, but. But uh, but when the when the people are when it's reported directly into Atlanta or or to Cartersville to the Mountain District, you know that they, they take it over, they come in and and so but you know just try to you know try to it, you know, if you happen to be one of these people whatever just try to follow the rules or if you don't know call down here I've got I've got a book that thick that will explain things that you know in the state of Georgia it's against the law uh, so anyway just um, this, just making you aware of that, and uh, we uh, then I did want to report on this. Uh, the since we've had our meeting, um, the South Dade and also the barbecue on the square they had back up. The, the square thing was on the tenth, and South Dade was the third. And those are it, it amazed me the people it turned out for you know both of them. South Dade went real good, and, and they ran out. But out here on the square, it was really a good day. The weather was perfect, you know. And there was there was a lot of people from this county that really turned out to that, and it was it was a good day, you know, for everything. Um, I do want to mention the uh, the property over there on, on Sales Lane uh, that we've been cleaning up, working on. Uh, we've got that in really good shape. They'll finish that probably next week if the weather uh, on, on some of the bush hogging. But 
Uh, we're going to fix a little parking area. I may say on the radio this morning, and during this fall weather and this fall season as the leaves change, uh, try to go over there, you know. I mean, y'all, you know, and, and just pull in, and we'll have a little area there, you know, and uh, and you can park. And just walk down in there, go down to the creek, and just see what that place is, you know, and how special it is. It's a, and it and it belongs to the people. It's it's nothing. It's not private land. It's your land, and uh, and it's something that um, young and old and can enjoy this. I mean, from now on, and 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 yes, you know, eventually one day, uh, I think probably after I'm gone, but there there'll be a uh, a water reservoir over there for a while with Day County, uh, in the future. Uh, we hope, you know, soon to get started on this, uh, our federal permit, you know, which take a couple of years, you know, um, and, uh, and, and just start that process for the future commissioners or the people set here in the next, you know, few years or next, next two years. But, um, but, but try to go and look this over and, and, in the, in the months and the years to come, we'll try to start, you know, I know the school is, is mentioned, uh, you know, having some events over there or having, uh, you know, field trips or whatever because it's, it's a place well i've never been i've never really been down there as a kid I'd, i went by there and i didn't really realize and you want until you drive down and go down and park and walk um you know what a what a really special place this is so but um, and with, you know if you have any questions about that just give me a call and and uh, i'll give you some, kind of some directions or whatever you know on it. so have y'all got anything else y'all want to add or talk about We'll mention the football <clears throat> homecoming parade will be this Thursday here. <clears throat> Your route, I suppose. So <clears throat> come out and support that. Then that's Thursday coming up. Thursday, this yeah. Thursday. Uh, yeah. We're off tomorrow. They're off tomorrow night. They play Coosa next week for the homecoming. Ron, you got anything you want to say about the, the festival or anything out on the mountain? I mean, about uh, Everybody coming out? nothing's changed. I mean, as far as time and parking, everything's the, is the same. Yeah, the same. Okay. All right. Good enough. Right. I got one thing. Okay. If you see somebody taking something from county property, report it because they're stealing from you because we will have to pay to replace it. I went by a building the other day, and within the last two weeks, we've had a HVAC unit stolen. Yep. Cut the lines on it. Yeah. So, you know, if you see somebody taking something, it's your money they're taking. It's not ours because we will have to pay to replace it. Zachary. Okay, we'll move on. And uh, Mandy, hey, we, I'm, we're ready for you this time. I'm sorry. I got ahead of my myself there. She's a manager of our library. If you don't know who she is, who this lady is, and she does a good job. Yeah, I mean, my name's Mindy. I'm the manager of the library. As always, thank you so much for letting me come and present on what's happening at the library. Um, we had an internet outage for two days this past month, and it really hit home exactly how many of our community members rely on the library. I always say it, but it's it's when you when you're down and you can't give that service to people, you really recognize how important you are and how hard it is for some folks that don't have internet and they don't have computers, they don't have a printer, and they're like, "You're my, what am I going to do?" I was like, "Hopefully, you do it." So we were able to help people and tell them to come back, but um, just wanted to reiterate that that that's. That's something a lot of people don't associate with the library, the, mm -hmm. the community service that we provide, um, the free internet, the free computers, and low-cost printing options. So I just wanted to touch base. Our internet's up and running, and we're fine now. It was just two days. Um, we have started our Friends of the Library book sale again. So I know a lot of our patrons were wondering, you know, where's all the books that used to be for sale? It took me a while to get figured out what how I wanted to move forward with our the books that we were weeding. We were using a recycling program, um, and we just didn't really have the staff uh, to be able to manage the book sales. So our friends of the library have stepped up to the plate and our volunteers, and we have a little bookstore right at the front of the library, right when you come in, and we've got them all posted there, and you can just pick out what you want and bring it to the front desk, and we'll ring you up. And this is our October calendar. Um, we have events pretty much every week for young and old alike. Um, we just had our kids club kite program right before we came over here today. So the kids made kites and they were flying them around the library. It was entertaining. Um, quilting group will be this Saturday at 8. 
we still have our team program. Two of our team <coughs> programs, our Young Creatives, will be this month, and our Super Smash Brothers tournament, which is always popular. Let's see. We have two special guests for our Ready to Read story time. The first one is a local author, Holt Webb. He just published this book, I Know in My Heart. And he's going to come and do a reading at the library and a book signing next Thursday, October 13th at 1030. And then the following Thursday, we've got Andy Porter. He has come to the library. He did one of our summer reading um, programs. He makes these giant coloring pages for the kids, and he draws while he's telling stories and reading. He's really awesome. So he'll be there October 20th. We have a special photo exhibition that's going to happen. A local patron, her father is a landscape and nature photographer, and she wanted to put up an exhibition for his work. So that'll be in the meeting room on October 27th from 5.30 to 6.30. So we encourage anybody that would like to come look at this beautiful photography. Trick or Treat Alley. It'll be my first time. I've heard it's a big deal here. Um, so we are getting ready. Um, we're, we'll have decorations. We'll have, we've got candy. We've got some of those temporary tattoos. And we have books to give away while supplies last. So um, come on out and see us at the library. And finally... As you all know, we had two integral positions open up at the library within 24 hours of each other. We were looking for a new youth education coordinator and a new lead circulation um, library assistant. I'm so happy to introduce and bring up Miss Samantha Ward. She is our new YAC. She's been shadowing Spencer today, and she'll be shadowing next week. So I just wanted her, I wanted y'all to meet her, okay. and she's going to introduce herself. All right, thank you so much. Speech, speech. Uh, <laughs> I told her she just had to introduce herself. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Ward. Like she said, I'm the new uh, youth education coordinator. Um, so just a little bit about me so you know where I'm coming from. Um, my undergraduate is from the University of Georgia in journalism. Um, I am currently a master's student online with the University of Alabama for library science. Um, I, this past a year, I've been working with the Catoosa County Library as an assistant, and I'm so excited to be transferring over here to Dade um, to kind of expand the responsibilities and fun that I get to have um, with everyone who is 17 and under part of this uh, community, um, especially because I myself will be moving here to Trenton very soon. Um, so I'm very excited to be part of this community, not only in a work setting, but personally as well. Um, seems like such a wonderful place. Um, and like she said, I'm already my feet wet with kind of the programs and all the responsibilities um, and I'm just very excited to be working with all of your kids and teenagers yeah. thank you good to have you welcome to Dade County and that's it that okay winds everything up. any questions any or, questions okay good report thank you okay all right thanks y'all I was going to mention too you I can't even read my writing hey but I, I one thing I want to bring up I ain't got anything to the library but when you mentioned <laughs> being down because of the computer I don't whether uh Y'all realize this, and, and you probably haven't if you haven't had any uh, uh, communication with CHI Memorial, but evidently they had a, they got hacked and they've been down most of the week. So anyone that's been trying to get a hold of their, to find out anything about their records or anything, I don't know what the, I know it's serious because one of the comments I had, they probably won't be up and running probably next week. And that's big. Not just in Chattanooga, it's a whole CHI system throughout the country. So, well, pretty, that's a little more serious than our, pretty, our end yeah. um, with the hospital, but we also are main book distributor, yeah. and it's not just us. It's public libraries all over the country, schools. Yeah. They had a malware attack, and yeah. um, they were down for over a month. Yeah. And so it's... It's serious it's, stuff. I mean, cybersecurity is a... Yeah. yeah. Basically, when you, you get into right like now. that, you know, you got health records and all. I don't know what I was... You know, it's a lot involved in... And, uh, and the way I found it, I didn't, I really hadn't, I don't think it's been on the news or anything, but uh, I had a stress test a week, almost two weeks ago, and, and, I, and I thought, well, no news is good news, you know, because it's my five-year, you know, thing, and, and uh, it wouldn't let me go on to, to find out. It kept kicking it out, you know, and so uh, and a friend of mine up on the lookout, he was there the same day, and we didn't know what we, I said, well, what are you doing here? And he was there for a stress, he called me today, and he said, you know, I'm weird, he said, I can't. You know, can't find out. Even my doctor can't even go in and find out. And, and he said, uh, you know, uh, there's something going on. Well, anyway, I made a call and found out, and he did too. It, it, it's 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 bad. It's serious. So, 
I don't know, but I just uh, just want to mention that to people that don't know. You know, they need to me to know. You know, it's serious. It's and before, of the, yeah, before yeah. they'll put everything back on, they <clears> have to do. That's what I found out. Also, they have to do a huge amount of work yeah. behind the scenes before they're going to let anybody back in. Yeah. So they might get the that initial problem fixed, but before they'll do anything else, they've got to like lock everything down and secure yeah. it again. Yeah. Well, and it yeah. costs a lot of money too. Yeah. I That's know. right. Yeah, yeah. I know. I think it costs a lot of money when it happens, and then it costs a lot of money to get it fixed. Yeah. yeah. Good report. We appreciate it. Well, thank it. you. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's move down to Miss Sarah Dyer or Laura Beth. I think Laura Beth's here tonight. Laura. Yep. Sarah is at the state show. She left yesterday to go down. Um, but as usual, we've we've been really busy. Um, I have gone back. I think I've hit every fifth grade class so far, and that's a lot of kids. There's actually about 145 fifth graders in our county. Um, I didn't realize we had grown so big since we graduated with a group right. of 90. Um, so yeah. it's very, it's crazy to see us grow, and it's been exciting. I've seen so many um, of people I graduated with, their kids now, and they look just like them. I saw Zach Vice's <laughs> daughter the other day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you are a vice. <laughs> and it was, it, so it's just, it's been a lot of fun for me, and I'm really happy to be home. I just wanted to say that. Um, but the forestry judging team competed in the Northwest District competition on September 6th. They worked really hard during their practices to learn the extensive material, and I know that because I had to teach it to them and learn it myself, and um, there are 70 different tree species that we had to learn, 30 different insects, um, and 30 different tree diseases and disorders. It is a lot of material. Um, so I was super proud that our little junior team placed second. Um, it just made my heart grow because I, we were all so worried. It was our first year being back in forestry judging in like six years. Um, is that second in the region or state? In the Northwest District. Northwest District. Georgia District. Yeah, okay. in the Northwest yeah. District. That's um, awesome. So, I mean, it, it was great. I was so <clears throat> proud of them. Um, Labor Day weekend, we hosted the fourth annual State of Dade Lamb and Goat Classic. Classic, we had about 200 lambs and goats shown by over 80 youth exhibitors from all across Georgia and the Southeast. We had a great turnout. Um, we do something really special at that show called the Stockman's Contest. Um, I had never seen it done, but it's like a little test that they take on just agriculture stuff. Um, and it's part of a contest to where they do that test, they do a little bit of livestock judging, and they it um, compiles points for them to win a prize. Um, that's very unique to our show, and I know that Sarah's really proud of that. Um, and it's also a good opportunity for our you know, Day County 4-Hers to kind of show what they've been doing and to really shine in our county and let everybody who attends see that. The event would not be made possible um, without our supporters. We get a lot of donations for this show that allows us to give cash premiums and various stock show prizes to the youth participating. We also hand out, um, we also have a lot of people that come and donate their time to help to grade these tests, to help in the ring. Um, and other things like that. So the big thank you to our many sponsors and volunteers. The Homeschoolers Community Club learned about buoyancy this, this month. Um, we learned about Archimedes and how he figured out how to calculate volume using his bathtub. Um, we did a hands-on uh, experiment where I just went to the grocery store and bought 20 different random objects and we dunked them to see what sank and what would float. Um, it was, they seem to really enjoy that. Um, our next club meeting is going to be next meeting next week on the 12th. They usually meet on Wednesdays and it will be at the Ag Center at 1. Um, our last craft night, we made turtles out of styrofoam bowls. It was a really simple craft, but um, I really get a kick out of watching the kids like be creative and get to paint them however they want. Um, so I enjoy those little crafts. Our craft night will also be again next week on Friday, and we will make the a black cat wreath, you know, for Halloween. Um, the 4-H Club will be having a fundraiser selling poinsettias this year. Um, it's going to be a six-inch plant. It will come in five different colors, and it will be twelve dollars. If you would like to reserve a specific color, please contact us, and we can set that aside. And those should be arriving around December first. 
This is our new winter edition newsletter for 4-H. I was really trying to do it every month, but I have run out of time, so I'm going to do it quarterly now. I gave you guys a call. Um, it has all of the activities that we'll be doing now through January. So you can see that you can come by the office and pick up a hard copy, or you can also see it on our Facebook page. The Dade Grader Garner class met on September 29th. Our guest speaker was Josh Fooder. I think, the ANR agent from Cherokee County, and he presented on maintenance pruning and pest management in the fruit orchard. The next meeting is on Thursday, October 25th, and the topic will be herbs in the landscape and in the kitchen. The Tri-State Beekeepers meeting will be on Monday, October 17th at 7 p.m. at the Ag Center. <coughs> Derek Foster will speak about hive winterization methods and materials. And then, the Tri-State Cattlemen's Meeting will be on Tuesday, October 18th at the Walker County Ag Center. The presenter will be Matt Crisp with Protrition Feeds, and he will present on fall and winter feed strategies. And as always, if you want the meal, call on our RSVP. That's all I got. Any questions? <clears throat> Good report. We appreciate all y'all. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Mr. George Williams, he's there. Alliance, Alliance for Dade and Chamber of Commerce. Yes. He's a chairman. George Williams, Alliance for Dade, your Chamber of Commerce. Wasn't with you last month. I had to send my uh, co-chair, but uh, I think he did well. I happened to watch you uh, live <coughs> on uh, our Facebook page, so I wanted to make sure he did a good job. Anyhow, we're up to 106 investors, so we grew by three uh, since last month. Uh, just a week or so ago, we did our Job Ready Date event at the high school, uh, which was a hiring event. Uh, we had 14 companies show up, local companies. Uh, we had 35 job seekers, which was a little disappointing, but still, 35 people walking in your door looking for work. Uh, we, we, felt, we felt good about that. In fact, it was pretty active. People were taking applications on site, and I do know that uh, people did win, uh, did uh, hire some people while they were at the uh, job event. So that was a good deal. Uh, our highway directional signs are in. We're going to be out putting up our directional signs for the Visitor Welcome Center uh, soon. Uh, you're looking at the person that's probably going to be out along the road with my yellow vest uh, to, uh, to get them put up. Uh, next, we're, uh, we have Margot Dade, McDade on board. Uh, who is our tourism director. And at the end of the month, Sandy White will join us as our president and CEO of the Alliance for Dade. We're excited to get her on board. What are the upcoming events that we have? Well, we have Fright Night. And I think one of the questions last month was, what is Fright Night? Well, some of you have been to our Lunch and Learns. We're doing this after hours, and we're calling it a Fright Night because we have some of our investor companies going to present about fight, frightening incidents in their business, what they did about that, and what they learned from that. So it, it's going to be a learning session for that. It's going to be at the Lineman School uh, from 5.30 to 7. Uh, Date Expo is right around the corner. It's the end of November. It's the Saturday after Thanksgiving, the 20, 26th of November. Uh, registration is now open, and it's also Small Business Saturday that we're doing the event on. So we're looking for a great deal of, it was a great event last year, and it looks like it's shaping up to be a great event this year. Uh, we're also doing Light Up Trenton. We've been out talking to businesses, and we're also, uh, the Alliance is going to provide $70 to investor companies uh, for painting their windows. One of the things we're doing this year is window decorations with a theme, uh, some kind of story about Christmas. So uh, we're helping those companies uh, that want to paint their windows be able to do that. Next is a visitor center. Uh, our numbers were pretty similar to September of last year. Uh, we, uh, we still have this roughly the same number of local visitors as we do out of town visitors. Uh, and uh, we're in Margo being in place now. She's refreshing the, the welcome center. So it's uh, 
she's excited to be there and it's an exciting place to be. I invite any of you and those listening, if you haven't been to the Welcome Center, come and see it. Any questions? Any questions? Yep. Okay. Hey, Good thank report. you for your time. Thank you, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Audrey Clark, uh, Historical Preservation Commission and the Bay County Historical Society. Audrey, you got anything you want to bring up here tonight? Actually, as far as the Historical Preservation Commission, Jamie pretty much covered everything. I think you could hear from his report that everything is finally well underway. And we will see this thing come to fruition, maybe in our lifetimes. <laughs> no, it's really going to happen. And uh, we are prepared to start and get everything going for phase two. So that's wonderful and exciting news. Uh, we don't, uh, you know, we've been asked about when do you think this will be completed. Well, according to the layout of the plans and the phases, we have a date. But then there's all this life stuff that happens in between. So... That's the projected date, and, and I think we'll be close the way everything's going so far. Um, that's for Historical Preservation Commission. We will announce that the Bank of Dade will present the Dade County Christmas Parade this year. We're uh, having it on December 3rd, Saturday, December 3rd. The theme will be um, Jingle Bell Rock, but that means anyone that wants to participate if you want to float in the parade, we ask that you have lights on it. And, and you can do any kind of theme on the parade. Come one, come all. If you've got a vision, just an idea or something you want to make your float, do it. That's fine. We're good with that. We do ask that there not be any more Santas on any of the floats because we'll bring Santa to town at the end of the parade so that the children can see Santa himself come to Trenton. And if you have any questions about that, uh, just give us a call down at the bank, ask for me or Seth Outs, and we put you on a list because we'd like to have an idea of about how many will be participating. It's a great, great parade, and we're excited about it every year. We've already started work on it, so we've had a lot of calls already. So come out on December the 3rd. And that's also, we've coordinated with the Dade County Sheriff's Department, and they'll be having their thing going over here to that day. And that all leads up to the parade itself. Any yeah. questions? Good report. It'll be a special, special day. It'll be a special yeah. weekend. It yeah. really will. Hopefully the weather will be good. And, and be good. we do have the following Saturday reserved for a rain date in the event we don't get to do it on the 3rd. And we'll also have the setup on the square um, where we'll have the Macy's Trenton Christmas Parade. <laughs> it was a big hit last year, and so I've already talked to the people that was involved in that, and they intend, don't they, Don? Don't you, Don? Uh, intend to uh, participate with that. So we hope it's just a fun, great night for all of our people in our community and surrounding. Yeah. Good report. Appreciate it. Okay. Move down to number 5A. Mr. Don Townsend, if you would go over our financial report, please. Okay, as of September 30th, uh, we had a balance in the general fund of $156,872. And on hand, uh, the investments are $1.3 million, so it's a total of $1,456,872. Federal Asset Fund, U.S. Department, um, U.S. Treasury has a balance of zero. Share of Special Fund, a balance of $8,938. Drug Abuse Education Fund, $13,807. Supplemental Juvenile Services Fund, $28,294. Victim Assistance Fund, $1,949. Jail Fund, $8,151. Federal Asset Fund, Department of Justice, zero. American Rescue Plan, ARPA Fund, is $2,183,717. Uh, accommodations tax is $212,852. Uh, 
employees flexible spending account five thousand four hundred forty six dollars payroll account eighty eight thousand eight hundred seventy three dollars in the projects account for 2015 we still have one hundred eighty eight thousand eight hundred eighty one dollars 2021 SPLOS funds project account ninety seven thousand nine hundred forty seven dollars and the special purpose local option sales tax proceeds account we have one million one hundred ninety three thousand one hundred twenty seven dollars um, and the uh, other funds there uh, IDA construction series B and uh, debt service A and B are both all zero and the as far as the revenues income statement for August 31st we had a revenues uh, that month ending at five hundred forty four thousand nine hundred sixty three dollars uh, we budgeted $459,020, so we were in excess of $85,943. Year to date, $1,098,462 is what was uh, collected, and we budgeted $995,000, so they again have excess of $103,462. And the uh, expenses for August. We saw $922,916. We had budgeted $1,053,082. So we were under budget $130,165. And for a year to date, we have expensed $2,209,084. Budgeted $2,322,317. So again, we were under budget $113,232. Budget attained through August 31st should be at 16.67%. Revenues attained were at 8.34%, and expenses were attained at 16.47%. Uh, local option sales tax collected for the month, uh, representative of a couple of months ago when it was collected at the merchant level, but it, anyway, it was at $225,897.14. <clears throat> and the uh, BLOST, or Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax, was collected at $305,973. And the, you see the 2021 and 2015 SPLOS tracking worksheets, and then at the final report we have the Tax Commissioner's report. Um, Budgeted $5,495,500. So far, we've collected $192,770.56, and that's it right at 3.51%. That concludes the report. Okay. Any questions? Comments? Okay. Not I will entertain a motion to approve our financial report as presented by Mr. Townsend. I have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. And call a vote. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Tartline? Yes. Goff? Yes. Ms. Bradford? Yes. And Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Okay. Robin, you got anything you uh, can nothing bring, nothing report that you can bring before us? Okay. All right. No unfinished business. Okay. The reading of the minutes of our last month's regular meeting and any special call meetings will not be required since all commissioners have been furnished copies in advance. The minutes are public record and available for review in the county commission's office. The minutes are included in our consent agenda. At this time, I'll ask Mr. Townsend to go over our consent agenda and we will consider a motion pertaining to that. Mr. Townsend. Okay, we have the approval of the agenda as amended to add the Dade Water Sewer Authority uh, approval of the previous meeting minutes, approval of the personal status report, approval of proclamation for Pro fire prevention week, proclamation for uh, red ribbon week, and a proclamation for national breast cancer awareness month. We also have um, under SPLOST approval of to clean, seal, and stripe the county parking lots, and that was Eclipse. Uh, sealing and striping. I didn't write the amount down. You have it. We'll get. Wait a second for the amount. I forgot to write that down. Actually, y'all may have it before I can have it. Let's see. It's 
Stacy back there? Nope. Oh, yep, he's back there. $63,391. Sorry about that. And the uh, historic courthouse, uh, yeah, restoration project. Okay, so uh, authorize the moving forward with phase two to uh, let RFPs and then sometime in November, December, re review in January, February, uh, approval of the lease of real and, and or personal property for provision of fire protection and rescue services as represented under rep, uh, resolution R-54-22. I don't know if you wanted this on the consent agenda, but an appointment of a committee for uh, uh, to meet with Mayor Case and Commissioner Mondo Wooten. Uh, that would be Ted Rumley and Lamar Lowry. And then resolution R-55-22, uh, the G dot section 5311 grant for fiscal year 2024 grant cycle and that's that's it okay any questions or corrections i just want to make clear what we're doing what we did with the water company what, what, what are we? i didn't no. we just added it to the agenda okay i make a motion to approve the okay do i have a second I'll second. Senate, okay. Motion second. Call the vote. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Hartline? Yes. Mr. Gall? Yes. Ms. Bradford? Yes. Chair votes for yes. Okay. All right. All right. We don't need uh, an executive session. Y'all got anything you want to add tonight? I got I got one thing I want okay. to add. I've got an yeah. event coming up. Uh, thought about this a while back. On December the 10th, I'm going to have a veterans holiday meal. We're going to do it at the American Legions Hall. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a veteran plus one. So if you're retired or active or whatever in the military, you can come with one person with you. And we're going to have a, a dinner for you between 11 and 2 on December the 10th. I will have a flyer and stuff next, next month to put out to where people can see it. But... On December the 10th, we're going to do a meal for veterans. It's free, uh, and you can bring someone you will. You can come sit down and have a good meal. You're sponsoring this, right? Yeah. You say, you know, well, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a special day, too, you know. It's good. Um, I just, a couple of things I want to mention that I didn't. Um, I told you about the Memorial, uh, Memorial Hospital CHI, but also uh, the Trent Telephone Company. They are very, uh, well, the contracts are very actively out there on this cable. It's, uh, I try to give a report every week on that. And what made me think of that, and Audrey used to work there, and I used to always ask her to bring that up. But I'll try to get somebody from the phone company next week, uh, to come I mean, next month, to come in and give us kind of an update because I know they're out there on the ground. They're actually, you know, working, and, uh, you know, and, and it's, that's what we've been waiting on. So it's, it's going, it's going to the positive, and, and I think, you know, I know Lamar, you've had some calls. Yeah, up I there should, I should have reported on that too because they're actually, I've been working with them, getting right away, yep. right away signed for the cable to, to be put underground, fiber optics yep. to be put underground. So yeah. I've got a kitchen table full of them right now, and I'm I'm working in my neighborhood. In with your them. district, that's and, right. Yeah, that's my right. district. Because that's where they well, started. Mostly, yeah, 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 where they're starting. Yeah. So. yeah. So okay. they, yeah, good. Another thing too, uh, speaking of right of ways, I don't know if you've been contacted here or not. A lot of people in the county have uh, from Georgia Power has got a, a subcontractor in here and they're actually soliciting contracts actually for trimming of the lines. If you got a line running across your field or whatever, whether it's concrete or whatever in your driveway, a lot of the, a lot of the lines there are going and, and they're asking people. Uh, they got, uh, I think, two, uh, a lady and two men and uh, they, they'll contact you. Um, it is legitimate, uh, and if you suspect anything, call us or call the sheriff. But they're wanting uh, the uh, easement to go in and strictly to keep the trees trimmed under their lines. I always thought they had that on most all of them, you know, but I, evidently if some they do not, and uh, they're not asking it for nothing. They're actually paying for that right. And uh, so I know we have, we've got three or four different properties the county does that, that uh, that we're looking at uh, doing, and you know, they're, they're asphalt. There's no tree, no way any trees could ever be planted there. But but still, though, they're wanting that uh, that uh, permission there. And I know one of them they pay, they're paying us like five thousand, the other three thousand dollars for the right way. So 
if those people contact you or whatever, you know, um, you know, talk to them or if you don't feel right or want to check them out, call here. I've got contact numbers for their uh, superiors, their boss, and, and uh, I'll call the sheriff's department. But that is happening. Yeah. Audrey. I noticed under the card it was contract manager. Are they actually asking for a contract check? Are they asking for more of a right way that comes theirs? No, it's a, it's actually a right. It's actually a, a they've got the right away already because it's there. I mean the power line is, but it's to give it's to keep you from coming back or maybe some of your heirs and planting an oak tree or a fast growing tree right under that line, and them having to spend all this time every year trimming it is what he meant to say. And so it has nothing to do with them uh, doing an easement to move poles, no. guidelines, or nothing. Strictly, strictly trimming vegetation, just strictly trimming. Okay. Yeah. I was just yeah, and, and we've had, you know, like I said, several people call, and it was really, you know, because it kind of sounded fishy that they were going to pay. And one lady called, you know, they were going to, she had a pretty good length there on her farm, and they were going to, she said, no, they're going to give me $6,850 now for nothing just to come in. And, and she said, it's an open pasture. And I said, you know, it's legitimate. She gave me the people's name, that lady's name, and I matched it up, and I said, yeah, it's legitimate, you know. And they'll send you a small contract. You read it over, and you let your attorney read it over. And then there's also an aerial drawing and sh to show exactly where it, what it is and what it's about. So, but it, I, you know, I don't know. It's it's odd that because all these years, you know, it's just like phone coming. I always thought, you know, y'all got the right to come in and, and and keep your. But evidently, there's some that they do not. They've been challenged on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyone else here? Yeah. If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. To have a motion. Motion to adjourn. To have a second. Second. And call a vote. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Hartland. Yes. Mr. Gall. Yes. Mr. Bradford. Yes. Chair votes yes. And the meeting is adjourned.